Hello YouTube, I want to talk about uh, amp hours, volts, and what it all means. And what it all means to me is watt hours, and that's the most important thing. So you got to take that in consideration. Watt hours is the most important. So, if you look, we've got uh, 780 watts from this device, 6.5 amps times 120 volts. And then, if you convert that, that's 780 watts. And then if you multiply that by 0.5 hours, it's 390 watt hours. So if you use this device for half an hour a day, you're going to need 390 watt hours to manufacture in the battery capacity that is usable. You have to be able to use that. So if it's at night, you definitely want to have about uh, four times that much in lead acid batteries. Okay, let's talk about a typical discharge curve. And I want to talk about it because it's important. Now, let's think of a battery as a candle. And if you have a candle that has a discharge at uh, an out, a rate of 5, and we're talking about 5 amps. If you discharge at a rate of 5 and you have 100 amp hours, it's going to discharge slowly until it hits, you know, for 20 hours at 5 amps, it's going to discharge around you know 20 hours hopefully if the battery's not dead but that's what's going to happen is you're going to be depth of discharge is going to go from 100 percent down to zero percent at that rate so you always want to stay at 75 percent of your capacity so you're going to want to oversize it four times of what you'll ever use in one night for your solar application. Now let's talk about battery capacity in the essence of how important is it. Um, let's take a look at this uh, right here. All right, This is a bathtub and basically it, uh, <clears throat> it captures the power. The battery captures the power from the solar panels. It's draining slowly into it. It doesn't quickly drain into it. It slowly drains into it. And then the inverter is the uh, the large pop at the bottom. It's, it should be a lot larger in the picture, but it gives you a sense of understanding. You can drain your battery power out rapidly. It'll pour out as fast as you can pour in it, and it'll pour out faster. So you got to look at that in a perspective situation. You can't just go and get a small battery, put in a small solar panel, and then drain the battery down in a matter of moments because it's going to damage it. Batteries don't last as long as they use they should. So you got to look at it like this: if they engineered batteries to last indefinitely, um, they would. But currently, the lead acid batteries are the the worst way to go for uh, batteries. Uh, it is absolutely the worst you could do. Uh, they got a lot newer batteries coming out, lithium ion, they output a good amount of power um, and they cycle down to 10% instead of 70%. So, you know, if you uh, run a battery down below 70% that's lead acid, you really take the chance of uh, hurting it. You get below 50%, you kill it. So, you always have to be particularly careful with your batteries. Me. I'm, I haven't been, and I've been extremely damaging to it. And let's talk about battery sulfation. Battery sulfation is definitely the number one killer for batteries. It will kill your batteries quickly, and it will kill your batteries without a doubt. And it's the only reason why batteries mostly die. Uh, basically, sulfation is uh, lead crystals building up, lead crystal sulfation building up on your plates and you got like a, a large you know string of plates those plates are sitting submerged in uh, sulfuric acid and the lead from a positive plate will attach to the negative plate and render that plate useless the surface area is where it uh, makes the electrical conduction and if you got the sulfation plates moving on both the plates, it, 
it kills it. So, as you can see in these pictures, um, you can see that the uh, selfation grows over time. So if it's growing over time, then you know it's obviously going to be a problem. So it'll work, it'll cause cause the problem on uh, AGM batteries, lead acid batteries, sealed uh, you know lead acid batteries or flooded lead acid batteries. All those type of batteries are prone to a uh, sulfation issue. Um, you want to definitely try to get rid of it. There's these sonic pulse devices that you can put on it to uh, recover them. I'm going to have to invest in one and try to get mine to last as long as possible. And that way, you know, I can be uh, done with the problem that I'm dealing with now. Which, you know, I dealt with this I knew this was going to be a problem. I should have been more careful with the battery size I chose. I should have picked up a battery size, uh, you know, probably four times bigger than what I actually have now to run the entire house. I have 12 T105 Trojan batteries. No, don't get me wrong, they're really stout batteries. But the issue is, I think I'm getting sulfation on the plates because I've been draining them lower than what is uh, recommended. And I'm not trying to hide it. I'm just trying to be honest with you, share my experience with you. So, sulfation is the number one enemy of a solar guy. So, be careful. Thanks for watching my video to the end. This is a really great channel. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and comment to this channel right here. It is really fun to hang out with me. I appreciate you watching all the way through. Also, if you're interested in video games, check out a video right here. Here's a video here. Click on it and see if you like it. This is my other gaming channel. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. And I hope you guys come back for more. And I will holler at y'all later.